I want us to go through this video by Mike Graham. So in this video, Mike Graham, um, a, a British uh, interviewer or broadcaster, but broadcaster will be interviewing a retired GP. So this retired GP now works with uh, doctors, NHS doctors who are struggling. So people who are probably off seat, uh, burnt out, having mental health struggles and are not able to work. So let's find, let's uh, listen to this interaction and and see what we think if what my uh, instructions are and what my kind of uh, listeners and, and viewers are telling me is true that you can't get a doctor's appointment that you can't even get to talk to a doctor you can't even see a doctor you get told to go to a walk-in center you can't get into that either there's no more appointments available surely if they were working more than three days a week then there would be more appointments available. And I don't think they're doing 13 or 14 hour days. But let's talk to Lawrence Buckman. He's a former NHS GP. Um, he knows the business better than anybody. Let's find out what he thinks. Lawrence, very good morning to you. Morning. Thanks very much for talking to us. Um, we were slightly taken aback yesterday. I was talking to a doctor who you may know, um, who comes on these shows uh, with us here at Talk quite a lot, Dr. Dean Eggett. Uh, he's up in Doncaster. Um, he basically told us, he can, I said, there's a problem here with availability of appointments. Is there not? And he said, yes. There's not enough of them. And he said, yes. And he said, the problem is, is that, um, I said, I think the problem is that a lot of doctors only work a three day week for various different reasons. Some say it's not worth doing the overtime. Some say they've got other work that they need to do. Some say that they, uh, that he said he, he, well, he suffers from burnout or is worried he's going to suffer from burnout. So he only works a three day week as a GP. And on the other two days, he does other things like he works on NHS pathway related stuff. I mean, it seems to me, and certainly from the reaction I've had from the audience, it seems to me that if doctors worked a five day week, we would probably clear the backlog of uh, GP appointments, wouldn't we? So before this uh, GP actually, you know, responds to this, uh, this question, I'll just start by giving my opinion or begin, or, you know, begin my opinion. So most GPs uh, don't work full time. Full time means working Monday to Friday or make, working maybe Monday to Thursday and then half of Friday. So four and a half days or five days a week. Most GPs would not even though most of us will want to. Personally, I work two days a week, regularly, routinely, and then when I feel like, you know, taking up some extra work, which we call local, you know, every now and again, I do that. The reason why most GPs don't work full time is mainly because of the amount of the work, the workload. <clears throat> Graham um, said a GP mentioned uh, that they, they might either be burnt out or they, they might become prone to being burnt, burnt out if they work full time. And, uh, you know, if you look at, if you look at it, the, the way he said uh, the burnout, you can see that he doesn't appreciate that burnout is actually a valid reason uh, for a doctor or a GP not to work full time. Um, and that makes me even worry that uh, he, he lacks an understanding or pros pro pro possibly lacks an understanding of of the severity of this entity called burnout i made a video uh, i think last month on burnout because burnout is a very important topic now reasons why gps don't work full-time number one is workload and by workload i mean both the clinical and the non-clinical amount of work so if you look at the gps you know consultation list for the day you probably will see 30 patients on their list and you might just think oh it's just 30 patients i can run through that a lot of the time that gp especially if it's a gp that is not a locum so a gp that works in that practice a lot of the time by the time that gp is starting their day they already have a lot of blood you know laboratory investigations that they have to review they have, you know, uh, letters from the hospital, letters from different health, you know, personnel or, you know, they have assessed patients and are making their recommendations or opinions. And that GP has to review those letters and act on them, decide if they need any action or they just need to file those documents. The GP probably has sent some what we call advice and guidance letters to specialists asking for further guidance on how to further manage or further assess patients. And they've probably got replies from those advice and guidance letters and they have to read those replies and act on those replies, action those replies, you know, those uh, responses by either communicating with the patient the same day 
or planning to communicate with the patient on a later day. The GPs might also have home visits, which means the GP will have to go to a patient's home or a care home to see a patient. So there are so many things that happen behind that screen, that screen of 30 patients that you see. There's so much more that a, a GP will usually have to you know, sort out or deal with. And all of that put together can increase your risk of being burnt out. You don't want a GP to be calling in sick because they're burnt out. So it's rather it's better a GP walks two or three times <laughs> a week. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got this nasty cough. Better a GP walks two or three days a week and is regular in attending those days because they're able to manage that workload than for them to, you know, work five days a week and then they're off sick for two days because they're now burnt out and depressed and anxious and then they're off for one or two weeks and then they're back and then they do probably three months and then they're depressed again. So you don't want your GPs going in and out of work. Let's carry on. Yeah, you'd want to believe that. Um, I, I was a what's called a nine session GP. In other words, I used to work four and a half days a week right. and a half day was for paperwork. Yeah. Um, well, that sounds and, normal to me. Well, uh, yes, and it was normal for me. You should remember that doctors only get paid for what they do. So if they work less sessions, they get less money. Um, I thought they got paid compared to depending on how many patients they actually had on their books. No, that's the total list. That's what money... So you can see that um, there's some knowledge gap there. So he... As Graham thinks that doctors get paid based on the number of patients that are on their consulting list, which means if a GP sees 30 patients and then does a home visit, they get paid. So if that was the case, doctors, GPs will actually want to do home visits because if you do home visits, obviously that should come with an extra pay. You know what I mean? So depending on the number of the patients you see, if that was the case, obviously you want to even, so people even want to overwork themselves, you know, so people want to see probably 50 patients a day around themselves, you know, um, dry by, by doing things that are not safe. So if, if, if doctors were paid based on the number of patients they saw, I, I bet you a lot of GPs will be working till 9 p.m. That's a fact. But... <clears throat> GPs are not paid based on the number of patients they see. They are paid based on sessions, which means if you work a session, which is morning or afternoon session, you get paid based on the number of sessions, irrespective. So even if one session has 20 patients or one session has 10 patients, the amount of money that is agreed during your employment, agreed, you're going to be paid maybe £10,000 per session, per annum or £9,500 per session per annum based on your contract agreements, irrespective of how many patients will be on that list. Usually the number of patients will also be agreed on your contract. So irrespective of whether your GP practice is seeing 12 patients per session or 15, 16, 17 patients per session, you're going to pay, be paid what is agreed upon. Yeah, even if patients attend the appointment or not, you get paid that comes into the practice the money that's divvied up to the individual doctor almost invariably is related to the number of sessions they do so i got a full nine sessions worth of money right when i retired in 2019 i now work for the nhs looking after doctors whose mental health is too poor to let them work um and uh, um I certainly see doctors there who couldn't possibly do a nine session week. Mm. Um, they just couldn't. So doctors who are doing six sessions a week are earning substantially less than their, well, right. there are no. But when you nine. say nine sessions, how is that broken down? Is that four and a half days? Is that, is that, is that two but sessions that's four. a day? Without trying to bash Graham too much, I appreciate the fact that he's also demonstrating that openness to be enlightened. He's showing his vulnerability that, oh yeah, I'm not particularly aware of how the GP practice works entirely. And you can see he's asking questions that show he's humble enough to, to seek further clarification. That's four and a half days, yeah. Right, so two sessions a day is what you're considering? That's right, yes. And how long, and how long per session? Ah, 
a huge debate on what a session means. Yeah. Uh, a session typically is four hours. That okay. would be that includes seeing the patient and doing the associated paperwork and all the other stuff. Right. So that, so, that you probably do a three and a half hour surgery, something like or three hour surgery right. on within a four hour frame. And that was normal. The trouble is that as doctors like me have gone off to do something else, mm. um, mainly now, to, as I say, sadly, to look after doctors who can't work um, at all, uh, the, the number of GPs that are left is too small to be useful enough. And so they get squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. Their hours are longer. In other words, a session is no longer three or four hours right. it's substantially more than that mm. and they find when they come home they're wrung out they just haven't got the energy so what they do is they diminish the number of hours which means they lose the that's a very valid point the workload so compared to maybe 15 20 years ago progressively the workload that doctors and not just doctors even people in other sectors of the economy of you know, other sectors of life the amount of workload people have had to deal with has progressively got bigger or got you know got worse or got more <clears throat> for instance the time you it's common to find that things new practices so we we do what we call audits yeah clinical audits in clinical audits we find out how our practice or the quality of the, the, the care we provide to our patients can be improved. So we can constantly do these clinical audits. And usually after every audit, something comes out, a recommendation comes out from every audit. Okay, yeah, I think it makes sense if we can begin to do this. It makes sense if we can begin to do this while we're seeing the patients. It makes sense if we begin to check this, check that while we're seeing the patient. That's very good. The end point or the desired end point is improvement in quality of care. But there's something we usually fail to factor in, the fact that there's not time. So usually most GP practices run on 10 minutes per appointment. A few practices run on 15 minutes uh, per appointment. Most are 10 minutes actually. So imagine seeing a patient within 10 minutes. I mean, patient has hearing problems, has chest pain or has cough, and has knee pain, which is likely from arthritis. And you have to deal with that within 10 minutes usually we advise a single complaint or a single problem to be dealt with but sometimes you know you just have to deal with two or three uh, problems within 10 minutes appointment and then you have to check this you have to check the patient's blood test you have to check you know from some letters from specialists you know to get some further information that will help you assess that patient and manage that patient um, so you don't have to probably be doing a repeat referral that has previously been done within a few months you want to so there are a lot of things you check and uh, you can't always deal with that within 10 minutes. That's just the thing. The pay that goes with it. And although the practice gets the money, they don't. And even worse now, we're seeing defunding of practices. That's a government policy has been going for years. And what happens is the number of staff you can employ falls, which means that the nurses, the healthcare assistants, all the other people, you've got less resource to do that. So the practice I'm a patient in, which is not my own form of practice, um, they have an enormous waiting list. Uh, and it's not because they're not working hard. It's because, as you say, there are not enough doctor sessions. And yes. as a but if the reason why there's not enough doctor sessions is there's not enough doctors doing enough sessions, then surely the doctors should do more sessions. Yeah, but they don't want to. And well, they, sorry and about that. You know, I don't want to come yeah. to work every day at five in the morning either, but I do because it's my job. It's what we, it's right. what's well, cost, you know. Sure. Well, I went to work because I loved it. I enjoy, I got a real kick out of it. Yeah, so do I. Most doctors enjoy their jobs. Most GPs enjoy their jobs. I enjoy my job. I love it. I enjoy the science of medicine. I enjoy having to interact with patients, uh, assess them, come up with a diagnosis or, a, or a, you know, a probable diagnosis, initiate treatment, you know, uh, liaise with other specialists or the, other, other of my colleagues uh, so to ensure that we are doing the best for our patients. So that might be in terms of referring the patients, uh, seeking advice and guidance from specialists at the hospital, you know, referring patients to the occupational therapies, physiotherapies, you know, orthopedics for joint injections, you know, doing all of these things, you know, brings a lot of excitement. But there has to be a balance.
Being a GP as well as being a professional in your field is a marathon and not a sprint. It's not a 100 meter race, it's a marathon. If you take up more than you can chew, you will burn out. In my video on burnout, I shared my experience. I burnt out so fast. I qualified as a GP February this year. And I bet you within three, four months, I was burnt out. I had to cut down on my sessions. Is that intense? That's a fact. It is that intense. A lot of people don't understand that. And you know, when it comes to medicine, there's a lot of emotional attachments to the medical profession, such that people expect doctors to be 100% selfless and sacrificial. People expect that sacrif sacrificial attitude, such that a doctor should literally lay down their own lives and their own health you know, to help their patients. So there's that emotional blackmail that usually comes when medicine is concerned, uh, such that people feel like, oh, why should a doctor be going home at 5 p.m.? Meaning doctor should, should doctor should work till 10 p.m. You know what I mean? Should start work at 8 a.m. and probably work to 10 p.m. I mean, they're doctors. This is what they signed for, you know, to save lives. So there's that emotional connection and emotional blackmail that is commonly, you know, uh, found in medicine. And that is what Graham is actually demonstrating here. I mean, doctors, he doesn't really want to care to find out why those doctors are not able to work five days a week. He just wants them to work five days a week. He doesn't want to care to find out really uh, why they are not able to do that. What is making them struggle? What is the workload? How much time have they got to deal with the workload before them? Do you get my point? It's one thing to have x amount of work to deal with but when you don't have enough time when the time you have is not sufficient for you to safely adequately deal with those you remember it's a marathon you might do it you might you know put in all the effort struggle and struggle and do it first day second day third day fourth day and what's going to happen is that your resilience will begin to break down if you overstretch a rubber band it gets to the point of in physics, you overstretch a rubber band or any pla any rubber, it gets to the point of plasticity, which is that point where when you don't when you take away the stretch, it doesn't recoil. It loses that elastic recoil, and then if you continue stretching it, it gets to the breaking point, the point where it breaks. Humans are like that. Initially, you stretch us with workload. We try to adjust. We try to carry things along. You keep stretching us over a sustained period of time. We lose that our elastic recoil. And that's where burnout comes in. And then we feel burnt out. The workload is still much. Nothing is being done. You're still carrying on stretching yourself. You get to the point of breaking down, which is where people begin to call in sick because they are depressed. They are physically exhausted. And they, just, they can't just, you know, some people commit suicide. You know, physicians, yeah, a lot of GPs and other, other doctors commit suicide in UK, in Canada, US, you know, in Africa, in Nigeria, where I come from. People kill themselves because of uh, exhaustion. Right. But the doctors who are working less are not taking the nine sessions worth of money. Um, they're taking the money that they're earning for the hours they do. And when you say to them, well, why don't you work a bit more? They say, I can't do it. I don't want to. And that's a different attitude to my dinosaur. Yes. Approach, but I mean, is, is that a modern sort of phenomena, would you say? I mean, why become a doctor if you don't want to be a doctor? That's what I would say. No, I think you want to be a doctor, but when you realise what the job involves, you're not so enthusiastic. And I look at hospital colleagues, too, who are in exactly the same position. No longer do people want to work full time. Well, because yeah, but that's because, that's because of a sort of what I would call a modern day malaise. I mean, you know, there's loads of people now who want a better... He calls it a modern day malaise or malaise. It's not... I'm not trying to justify anything. Making this video is not to just because I know that I've been a doctor for 11 years now. I was a doctor in Nigeria, I've been in the UK, and there's one common thing I've observed: emotional blackmail. You know, when it comes to when it comes to the welfare of doctors, there's always that emotional blackmail. Uh, people either don't understand or they understand, but they just don't care. They're like, you signed up for it, deal with it. So is that that's the approach? That's what we commonly see that emotional blackmail, and that's what he's demonstrating. You can see that uh, he's clearly demonstrating that emotional blackmail, saying it's a modern day malaise. And the GP, the retired GP, is a bit is trying to explain to him, but he's beginning to 
you know, be boxed into the corner that Graham wants him to be boxed into, which is where you begin to see that making it look as if it's a generational shift that the GPs or doctors of the previous generation, you know, the 980s and 90s were more resilient than the doctors of this day. No. The workload has, has doubled, tripled, quadrupled. I'm telling you, the amount of paperwork, the things you need to sign. When I was in uh, orthopedics, when I was a junior doctor some years ago here in the UK, I realized that sometimes you do you write the same thing in two or three places. You write it here. Patient assessment, you write it here, you write your maybe VTE risk assessment, you document it here, you document it there, you document it there. There's this multiplication, duplicity, multiplication of work that creates more exhaustion. So the workload progressively gets, if you've if had conversations with older doctors, orthopedic surgeons, retired you know, doctors, they confirm that things are much more difficult now. During their time, you know, a doctor will see a patient write one or two lines and that was it. Now, if you write one or two lines and something happens, that documentation is not enough to protect you in the, in the law court, you know, medical legally. So you see within that 10 minutes, a GP has to write a detailed documentation. You have to write the history you got from the patient. You have to write a detailed examination of what everything you did. So there's that extra pressure of having to document everything. There's also the med medical legal pressure Many years ago, doctors were not sued. Nowadays, doctors get sued. You know what I mean? So you have to be very meticulous. That puts an extra pressure. And you, have, you don't forget that you are time constrained. You've got 10 minutes. And a lot of time, we have one hour uh, to deal with all the admin jobs. You have to do all your referrals. And um, the only way GPs can really cope, let me tell you, is if doctors begin to work on paid hours, which means maybe you're supposed to work eight to eight to eight to four or nine to five, and then you work maybe nine to six or nine to six thirty, which means you're working one and a half, one hour on paid time, one and a half. And the other will say, eh, you signed up to it, why not do that one hour on paid time? That's still the emotional blackmail that we're talking about. So when it comes to medicine, there's a lot of emotional blackmail. Uh, people don't. People are not objective when they talk about the welfare of doctors. There's always an emotional blackmail attached to it. Work-life balance, which is something that we never ever thought about. People like you and I, we were growing up because we just liked working. And you worked in order to make money, in order to have a nice time, in order to go on holiday, in order to buy a house, you know, all of that stuff. Now people seem to think that going to work, you should only really have to do if you really want to. And you might not have to do it very much if you don't feel like it. And if you wake up one morning, you don't fancy it, you just don't bother. Right. And uh, that attitude now is seen by our younger colleagues, both hospital and GP, yeah. as a point. Um, they, but it's they not acceptable, is it? And then we keep talking about the NHS being in crisis, and the reason it's in bloody crisis is because the people working in it aren't working hard enough. Well, but if you... Okay, I think uh, we'll need to end it here. I just want you guys to see um, the opinions of people that are you know of not everyone but the opinions of some of the people who uh, who are in the media houses and and for you to understand their perception and these are the perceptions they will transmit to the general public and I, most a lot of the time if you if you sample the opinion of the general public uh, and it's a universal thing it's a global thing if you sample the opinion of people uh, as regards how doctors work oh it's usually horrible people usually say horrible things uh, go on Twitter, go on Instagram. People usually say horrible things. People say their doctors are stupid, their doctors are useless. People say horrible, horrible things about their doctors. Um, we're used to it now, unfortunately. You know, we're used to hearing such uh, horrible uh, things from the public. It does not stop us from doing the job we do. We'll continue to provide care for the people. It's the, it's the Hippocratic Oath is our profession. But we are human beings. Uh, will not be treated like camels and donkeys and beasts of burden. You know what I mean? We're not beasts of burden, we're human beings. And we have to be healthy physically, mentally, emotionally. We have to be stable. We don't have to be depressed and burnt out and anxious, you know, and having PTSD when you think about going to work. No, 
We want to be able to be functioning very well to provide the best care for our, our patients, uh, the populace that, you know, that we cater for. So I just wanted to react to this video so, you, uh, if you, so that if you care to know uh, what exactly happens in the life of doctors or GPs, you'll be more enlightened. And this is, this is, I stress, this is for those who really care to know because there are people that watch this and they will understand and they'll still not give a damn. That's a fact. They'll still not care. Yeah. So thanks for watching.